welcome to Book Tabia TV. I'm John Purcell and I'm here with Aussie legend John Williamson to talk about his memoir, Hey True Blue. Welcome John. Nice to be here John, thank you. You haven't really said much about your past in the, in, in the public sphere um, until now. What has changed? Why have you decided to, to write a book um, and tell us all about your, your past history? Uh, well, I guess there's been a lot of little stories I've done on radio on that to, to do with songs, but I'd be yeah, outside that I haven't. Yeah, well, uh, well, I knew after 44 years in the business, people would probably be interested in a few people would be interested, so why not start working on it? I think a few more than just a few. <laughs> <laughs> well, whatever. <laughs> and you know, and you see a lot of young artists do it before they even got going, and I think no, I'd rather wait till um, till I've got a few things to tell, and. Um, Meg and I actually started working with my wife, who, who sub-edited this in uh, Penguin, uh, approached us, so we said, why well, radio? We just meant we had to write it a bit quicker over the last couple of years, so um, it's been uh, it's been fun and sad, you know. It's, yeah. You go through a lot of the struggles and all that, yeah. So the, there was this, the struggle, there's always, with memoirs, there's a struggle in constructing the, the writing side of it, which takes a long time. But there's also facing the past is yeah. another, another part of it. Which was more difficult for you, the, the facing the past or the actual sitting down and, and physically writing this thing? No, I, I actually, I, I, don't, I, I actually handwrite everything. I actually enjoy, I'm an old fashioned, I actually enjoy putting pen to paper. I, the, the actual process, I enjoy it. It sort of feels artistic writing it down and uh, I got no problems with that. The, as far as the struggle to get that together, that was Meg's problem because she, she'd say, why don't you write about this subject, the wallabies or something? And, by the end of it, I've gone somewhere else, you know. So she's had to cut that off and put it somewhere else. So it's quite a big job. But the other, the other struggle is what you were saying is, um, is going back to when I, when I was struggling through my career, and everyone does. I mean, that's that's part of it. That's you get better at what you do. You, you have to handle crowds and all the rest of it, and learning to be an entertainer first in the seventies. And at the time. I didn't regard it as struggling really. It's only when you look back on it, you know, like when you're progressing, say you're at least progressing over the years, you're enjoying the progression. But going back, you think, how the hell did I do that? How did I put up with that? You know, the poker machines and and uh, being ignored or whatever, you know, and having to, being forced to sing songs you didn't necessarily want to sing, you know, doing covers and, but over a period of time, I replaced them all with my own material, you know, and, and want, I wanted it to be Australian. So what your um, your style of, of writing um, drifted away from what was what was then considered the popular sort of jingoistic, I suppose, uh, um, timing kangaroo down that sort of stuff. Yeah. You started to, to that's where it started, though. Yeah, you started to do more ballads, yeah. you know, dealing with real issues and, mm. and the way country life was. Um, was was that you, the true artist, coming out? The, the way in which you wanted to express yourself coming out. Is that is that your natural form? It was really the thing that got to me most was the, the folk scene in the 60s. It came from America to Australia and I was I was in Melbourne at the time. And uh, and of course that gets into Bob Dylan and Pete Seeger who did write songs, protest songs and were honest about things. It wasn't just about writing a song that's catchy, it was mm. also about writing you know, how you feel about things. And But uh, but I was also having a commercial head. Like, oh Man Emu was obviously written to, be, to entertain and there was no message there at all except maybe that, you know, everyone's got something, you know, if you can't sing you can run or yeah. whatever. Uh, so it was actually a moral just about everything I write for some reason, but uh, maybe that's the folk, the folk influence. But, uh, is that, that also your, your upbringing? I mean, is, was there, did you have a, in, in, in the song um, Honest People you talk about your the past and how yeah. lucky you were um, and the, the, the strength that you, you seem to have gotten from having a, sort of a happy childhood. Mm, very happy childhood. Yeah. So that sense of um, what's right and wrong and of, of, of telling a, a story that has a moral, um, seems to be a component to that. Yeah. Is, so is that, is, is, was that one of the, the, the I suppose, the um, driving forces to your music, that, that sense? Well, I think more the Quamboid experience was just being surrounded by music. Mum and Dad had their voices trained, you know, even though they were farmers, but we lived in the town and any any little, musical event involved my family and my cousins and my uncle played fiddle, dad played banjo and as I said mum played piano badly but there was other piano players around. Uh, was that, that was by a musical influence but I, I'm sure there was no protest or, it was only afterwards I realised just how, 
how free and how um, safe it was in a little bush town that I write about it now because things have changed a lot. I think you know a lot of the evils of the world have come across to our country now and, and uh, I don't know why, I guess because we're communicating more and, um, and we're less isolated so sometimes good things when they come out of isolation are, are destroyed as well, I don't know. But, uh, but uh, it was really, uh, I think it was going to boarding school in Melbourne for four years where the folk scene was big with, with Judy Jarks, Judy Durham and it was sort of a mixture of jazz and folk music. Mm. There were lovely little coffee lounges and that that had folk singers and uh, I used to sneak out from boarding school unbeknownst to them and you know put on a, a civvies tie and and go to the folk clubs and uh, I was determined after that that I was going to end up doing that sort of thing but uh, it wasn't until I was you know, a few years later, a couple of years later, that I realised I could write a song, and uh, yeah, that was all man Ebi. So, you've travelled around Australia a lot. I mean, in, over the last last um, forty five years, you said. <laughs> yeah, forty four years in the business. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, that's amazing. Um, the changes that you've seen. Are there anything? I mean, there, there are changes for the worse, uh, but are there any things that you see as you travel around that have actually gotten better? Like in, in, in country Australia. Well, strangely enough, despite the fact that we lose, it's still losing habitat and. Uh, uh, you know, I, I think the, you see the protests now from farmers about you know the fracking and that destroying the water and all that sort of stuff. I think the green movement and the farmers have come together a lot over those years when they used to be a bit separate. You know, mm -hmm. I think now the farmers are realising that the green movement is a really good thing. You know, it's not only helps the bush and the the natural environment, it also helps sustain you know, farming country as well, you know, and I'm, I've come from both sides, so, you know, um, but, the, you know, I, I still think, as usual, uh, money is always the enemy, you know, the big developers and, you know, when it comes to real estate moving into old bush and, uh, and farming in areas where it's too risky and it's just knocking out more bush and bringing water out and, you know, planting cotton where, where I thought the bush was going to be safe, you know. Yeah. But I think there's one thing about Australia that the uh, the dry continent has actually protected a lot of it because there's only so much water to go around and uh, they've had to pull back a bit. And you know, now I think the government's turning around now, starting to um, improve the Murray Darling Basin. You know, I think the desperation has come in there mainly because people are starting to run out of water and you know, the whole thing's starting to come together a bit between conservation and farming. And I think that's a good thing. Yeah. I think we're thinking about it a bit more nowadays. Uh, you know, when I was a kid, I think we thought the bush was going to go on forever. You know, the, the uh, Kimberley was virtually untouched, and you know, we're starting to think more about it now. But still, it's still a battle yeah. against against the big money companies. Yeah. You're not only releasing your memoir; you've just released uh, your fiftieth album. You've sold over four million albums in Australia, which is amazing, absolutely amazing achievement. Would you be able to give us a song from your new album? Sure. What about Honest People? Or you want another one? No, Honest People's the one. John Williamson's memoir, Hey True Blue, is available from booktopia.com.au right now. You alright? You going? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Funny how a pub is like a heart that won't give in. Every other shop has closed the door. We can't make a footy team, the school is closing down, there really is no town anymore. Maybe I'm just thankful for my childhood, when life was full of never being bored. Where every face was eager to be friendly, singing at the church to please the Lord. Miss the simple innocence of honest people in a country town. So all power to the farmers markets, you're bringing back the street that we all knew. Where every shop is eager to be friendly, where I can hear that how do you do. The way the world is going Something tells me it's all going wrong Monster stores all along the highway Not a street that we can all belong Howdy, howdy, howdy Lord God, St. Mrs. Brown By golly, I just miss 
that's a simple innocence of honest people in a country town. Guitars on. Yeah, funny how a pub is like a heart that won't give in. Every other shop has closed the door. We can't make a footy team, the school is closing down. There really is no town anymore. Maybe I'm just thankful for my childhood. When life was full of love and being free. Where every best eager to be friendly. Home is just as far as I can see. Simple innocence of honest people in a country.